Humanity is facing a dilemma. The so-called corona crisis has changed much of the world in 2020, and not exactly for the better. A return to the old normality, as many people would like to see, is definitely no longer possible. And the so-called new normality scares many people, and rightly so. The question is whether there might be another future possible rather than the so-called new normality. Perhaps we can succeed not simply in together overcoming this crisis, but also use it as a real chance for each and every person in the world. The corona crisis spectre still has a firm grip on large parts of the world. While some are still afraid of an infection with a killer virus called SARS-CoV-2, others fear mandatory vaccination programs and the loss of all their basic human rights. Consequently, for months, people have been arguing both about the proportionality of the measures taken to prevent infections, including lockdowns and social distancing rules, and also about the validity of statistics and controversial laboratory tests. People are infuriated with each other, and even after months, there still seems to be no sign of the situation easing. However, all sides certainly agree on one thing, things cannot go on like this. How does humanity manage to get out of this so-called pandemic, this crisis? Must we continue to imprison one another and hope that the COVID vaccine will cause as few adverse effects as possible? Must many more people be tested for SARS-CoV-2? Must many more studies be analysed and numbers and statistics evaluated? Or should we perhaps take a step back and look at the foundation of this whole so-called pandemic? The measures implemented to prevent infections and all reporting on these are based on risk assessment, statistics and tests. And what are these based on? On alleged viral evidence, that is, on scientific papers claiming to have proven the existence of a new dangerous pathogen. Despite many critical voices regarding corona from the fields of virology, epidemiology, infectious diseases and immunology, very few seem to be looking at the scientific foundation of the whole crisis. Scientists the world over seem only to be arguing about case numbers and opinions. The question arises as to why all these critical scientists doubt the benefit of the measures to prevent infections and criticise tests and statistics. But when it comes to the evidence for the virus itself, they seem to take for granted that the existence of the virus has been proven in a flawless, serious and scientific manner. Why? Why is everyone so sure about this? In the corona crisis, we have witnessed so many unscientific methods, contradictions and boundless exaggerations. So why is it that the scientific foundation of it all is assumed to have been proven beyond a doubt? Is it because the virologists worldwide have reviewed the publications of their Chinese colleagues, as would be their duty as serious scientists? Or on the contrary, is it because they have never verified these publications and they just assume, as everyone does, that the proof of the existence of the virus has been provided? One of the virologists known for having reviewed these scientific papers is the German virologist Dr. Stefan Lanker. From the beginning, Dr. Lanker has publicly questioned the evidence for the existence of SARS-CoV-2. But how exactly does he explain his doubts about the validity of the publications? Der Zweifel ist dadurch begründet, dass in diesen Publikationen, wenn man sie liest, ein Virus. My doubts are justified by the fact that these publications don't show the evidence for a virus or a genome by which the virus could be defined. Nowhere in the publications has the viral genome been evidenced. Nowhere has its length been determined. Instead, a conceptual construct of the alleged genetic strand of a virus is created. 
In order to do this, samples are taken from sick people and from these are extracted short genetic fragments or genetic material is generated in a laboratory through the process of letting cells die in test tubes. These short pieces are then used to theoretically assemble a viral genome strand on the basis of a predefined model. A complete real genome of a virus never appears in the scientific literature, not even for a single one. It would be very easy to demonstrate the presence of such a nucleic acid if it were actually there. The strands of genetic material are called nucleic acids. Detecting their presence and determining their length would be quite simple. The required standard techniques have been available for many decades. However, they are never employed in virology. Likewise, the claim that the entire genetic material, also called the genome of a virus, exists is simply not substantiated. Anyone who is proficient in English and adds around five to ten technical words to their vocabulary can check this for themselves by studying the relevant publications. In the case of COVID, the new SARS virus, there are just three key publications that need to be studied. By doing so, everybody will be able to see the false assumption that underlies the whole concept of the coronavirus. Furthermore, one will immediately see that the detection method established for SARS-CoV-2 merely detects molecules that are produced in every metabolism. These are the three seminal publications on SARS-CoV-2. In two of these, the existence of the new coronavirus was allegedly proven, and in the other, a specific laboratory test for its detection in the human body was claimed to have been developed. Virology has long established distinct, logical and verifiable criteria for detecting a pathogen. And of course, science in general also provides clear, logical rules as to when a paper may be classified as scientific. Let's briefly go through these required criteria step by step and review how many of them were fulfilled in the three papers on SARS-CoV-2. First, do the three publications fulfill the basic formal requirements for a scientific paper? Yes, all three of them fulfill the requirements. Second, were the papers peer-reviewed by independent experts before publication? No, this only happened for two of the papers. One paper in which the German virologist Christian Drosten was involved was published without peer review. Third, were there thorough investigations of other possible causes of the respiratory diseases? No, other possible non-viral causes were not taken into account. Fourth, was a pathogen isolated? No, indeed this would have been one of the most important steps in proving its existence. One paper claims isolation, but nothing was ever done that could remotely be considered as the isolation of a pathogen. Fifth, was a pathogen biochemically characterized? No, how could it be without prior isolation? Sixth, was it possible to determine a pathogen as the cause of the respiratory diseases? No, without prior isolation, this is also impossible. Seventh, is there evidence for the transmissibility of the disease? No, transmissibility is based only on superficial appearance and unreliable laboratory tests. Eighth, is there evidence that COVID-19 is a distinct specific disease? No, COVID-19 is nothing more than a mixture of long known symptoms and entire clinical pictures that can have a wide variety of causes. Ninth, has the claimed viral genome ever been detected in nature, in humans, animals or plants? No. As Dr. Lanka has already mentioned, the genome of SARS-CoV-2 is nothing more than a computer-generated theoretical construct consisting of endogenous components and fictitious segments that have been generated by means of software programs. Ten. Is there a validated, reliable, specific detection method for the suspected pathogen that is suitable for diagnostic purposes? No, 
The polymerase chain reaction, or PCR for short, is a molecular biology method that has been completely misused for the diagnosis of viruses for years. And 11. Was every procedure, every method, every laboratory result and every conclusion substantiated with valid control experiments and control groups? No, there was not a single proper control in all three papers. This is the foundation of the so-called 2020 corona pandemic, scientific papers that fail just about every criterion required. No isolation means no evidence of a virus. No control experiments means it's not scientific. If the corona crisis is to be brought to an end, the question of proof regarding SARS-CoV-2 must at last be openly posed. Only by doing this can the so-called pandemic be brought to an end once and for all. This does not mean that respiratory diseases will cease to exist, but it does mean that we will stop falsely attributing all illnesses to one and the same allegedly contagious cause. Consequently, people with these illnesses will no longer get the incorrect treatment. By presenting Dr. Lanker's findings, we don't want to just throw another expert's hat into the ring. God knows that there are enough so-called corona experts out there already. With Dr. Lanker's assistance, we want to completely take apart the alleged evidence for SARS-CoV-2 and subject it to scientific scrutiny. Hence, this project is not about opinions, but only about what is scientifically proven, logical, comprehensible and verifiable by anyone. We will not simply state something, but prove what we say. In doing this, we will demonstrate how you can verify all of our statements for yourself. So don't simply consume this project, and above all, don't believe a word we say, be critical and question our statements. Only this is scientific, and this is the core of our project. This is the Emmanuel Project. Our common goal should not only be to overcome the corona crisis, but above all to work together to ensure that nothing like this can ever happen again. In order to achieve the same, it is not sufficient to depend unquestioningly on so-called experts. Everyone has to find out for themselves and take responsibility. Then this global crisis can be transformed into a real opportunity for all of us. Additional information. All the videos and articles that we publish can be downloaded from all the internet platforms, forwarded and uploaded again on your own channels, on the condition that nothing within them is changed. We will gradually translate the videos and articles into other languages. You can find us on various platforms, such as BitChute and Telegram, and of course on our website, www.project-emmanuel.de. Appeal. If you are a virologist or bioinformatician and would like to help conduct the necessary control experiments that can end the corona crisis once and for all, please contact Dr. Stefan Lanka at the following email address. F-R-A-G-E-N at W-P-L-U-S dash V-E-R-L-A-G dot D-E.